What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show tonight. Uh, Stacking Surfer here. Excited to have you guys. Um, I know many of you have been tuning in for the TED episodes, and um, I've got TED back with us, so we're going to have a really good show today. Um, if any of you were watching what happened in the news earlier with the Fed, we're going to cover that. Um, we're also going to be talking a little bit more about constitutional silver today. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about eagles as well and currencies. And um, honestly, a lot of the things we're going to be talking about are going to be super relevant to you guys. Some of it may sound um, familiar, but that's because it's super important. And we're going to be re uh, hitting some of those points again as well. So not to belabor, belabor anything, I'm going to bring Ted on right now and have him join us here. Um, hey, Ted, hey, how folks, are you doing? Thanks for joining us. We've got an action-packed show here for you today. <laughs> So we're so, going to talk about what happened at the FOMC meeting. How many people watched it and, and heard what uh, what he had to say there? Um, what I heard him say was that they're going to leave interest rates alone. So why don't we talk first talk about what is the FOMC? The Federal Open Market Committee is the monetary policy making body of the Federal Reserve System, the central bank of the central banks. We're going to get into yep. this because we're going to be touching on the Bank for International Settlements. They're the ones that's causing all the problem. They're the Keynesian animal that's in the that's upstream, causing all the rifts and all the currents and the torrents and the rapids and all this kind of stuff. It's doing a battle right now with with Austrian monetary economics. So that's what's happening. Um, so if anyone, oh, you have no idea what's that. I'm telling you what's happening. You got the Austrian monetary economics monster coming in to pull out by the by the throat the Keynesian economic model. And that has got its tentacles all throughout this big thing here. So uh, I'm trying to get my my my. So camera. Ted, to start off, what I want to do is ask everybody to hit that thumbs up if you haven't done so yet. That helps get the okay. algorithm wake woken up. A um, couple quick announcements, real quick, before we dive into it. Um, we do have um, super chats are now working. So anytime we hit a hundred dollars in super chats, um, I will be giving away a silver, um, uh, basically bar from uh, Tim's shop. And then um, you guys can also, at the same time, you can you can give people memberships, things like that. But we're definitely building the membership. And after the show today, um, we'll be our first, um, uh, well, it won't be our first, but it'll be one of our private member Zoom conferences that we're doing today too. Um, and we're gonna have Ted on with us for a few minutes there to ask some you know private questions for the group. So we're looking forward to that, Ted. But what I'd love to do is anybody that watched the FOMC conference today or um, yeah, I guess basically conference that they were holding, at least the press conference of it. Go ahead and put a one in there. I want to see how many of you guys are following that, how many of you watched it or read the news about it. Would love to find out about that. It was a very important key interest rate that, that uh, many investments are going to be keyed off of. So the message today from Jerome Powell, bottom line, was going to leave interest rates alone. So the last time he said it was going to leave interest rates alone, and I said they were going to go down. I got a phone, month, bunch of phone calls from people saying I was wrong. And I was like, geez, I, I, I think I got to wrong. No, I'm not wrong. Uh -uh. So what, what I did this time is we're going to go to the U.S. 10-year, okay? The U.S. 10-year yield. And we're going to find out what actually happened with regards to that. Now, the U.S. 10-year yield prior to the announcement was 4.308, okay? If you all have a piece of paper, you might want to write this down because – this gonna, it's going to make a lot of sense in here in a second. Now, the two-year rate was 4.732. Who's picking up that something's wrong here right off the bat? Is the two-year rate higher than the 10-year rate? Yes. What is that called? It's called a bond yield curve inversion, okay? And it typically means that we're entering into a recession. But I'm going to prove it to you mathematically today that we are in a recession. So these numbers, the 10-year prior to Jerome Powell's announcement, was 4.308. After the announcement, it was 4.277. Now, folks, it might not seem like it's very much of a difference between the two, but you're talking about a quadrillion dollars. You multiply yeah. a quadrillion dollars by the differential, the delta between the 4.308 and the 2.77, which is the rate that it wound up being after the conference today. Folks, you're being lied to an epic scale and, and you might want to record this because I'm going to show you some stuff that's actually going to blow your socks off. <laughs> so now what's happening is the two-year yield has gone from 4.732, again, higher than the 10-year. Okay. So you would think that the 10-year should be higher than the two-year, right? The longer that you borrow the money, 
the higher the interest rate should be. And for those of you that have been saying, uh, you know, not nice things about my fraternity here, as well as the Gumi Temple Shrine, I have a note here back for you. Um, we do a lot of wonderful things. And one of the creeds to the Masonic order is you help women and children and orphans. And my wife and I adopted two children. So I would appreciate it if you stopped taking shots at my fraternity. Okay. Also, the, uh, the, the Shriners Burn Hospital in Philadelphia is the nation's best burn hospital. And you know what they charge for children? Zero. Okay. So there are bad people in every organization. I never rose to that area. So I hopefully you can uh, tell that from who I am and what I am. So if you can see that behind me, you'll see I've covered it up for you guys. It's going to come off now because I've talked about it. Okay. Other people say, oh, I must be ashamed of it or whatever. I'm not ashamed of it at all. That's, I didn't take it down. It's still up there. So anyway, the FOMC, uh, including the chair and the regional F uh, Federal Reserve Bank presidents, make up the Federal Reserve Board and the FOMC meets regularly to assess economic conditions and formulate monetary policy decisions aimed at achieving the Federal Reserve's dual mandate of maximal employment and stable prices. How can we have stable prices when you're in injecting into the economy 1% of the GDP per week? If the GDP is $23 trillion per year, 1% of that is $232 billion added per week. So how can they say that they want to control inflation if they're actually causing it? There's a lot of things you're not being told the truth of. Remember, we told, talked to a number of you. We said, make sure you check your deed. In your side, your deed, you're not going to see the word land. You do not own the land, folks. And it, you're going to check also you're going to see that you do not own the stocks that you think you own. You must have a QCIP number. There must be a unique identifier. When the truth comes out, entire industries are going to vanish. And the ones that are going to stay are going to be the ones that are telling you the truth. You guys are here. We started this whole program, this truth now, on March 1st. We have now over 200,000 people have seen the truth. And they're hungry for it. They want more. And that's what we're giving them right now. But anyway, the watered down in currency is what's causing all the problems in terms of requiring more unit dollar units to get the same kind of purchasing power. Much like what we talked about, if uh, Jared and I are going to start a restaurant and we're going to yep. sell the best crab bisque out there and we're going to sell it for a dollar a cup. Well, things are going fine. But what happens is the cost of goods go up. The cost of living goes up. And I say to say to Jared, man, we can't afford to sell this soup anymore for a dollar a bowl. And we can't. And Jared says we can't sell it for more than a dollar a bowl. I said, well, let's add some water to it. Yep, water down. Said, right. So we add about a gallon of water to a 50-gallon pot. And do you think the public see, senses anything? No. It's called the boiled frog syndrome. Watch this. I'm going to be coming out with a book, and it's going to be called Boiled Frogs, and we're going to turn it into a movie. And you guys are going to love it. Okay? <laughs> I and can't wait. We have, we have a, one, a lot of wonderful things happening. But anyway, when you put this water in the soup, okay, it's watered down. There is no way to get it out. It's not as though you can boil it off or whatever, okay? It's got to be absorbed into the population, which means that this price suppression, actually the price inflation that we're seeing right now, is going to be here. Now, at the beginning of all this, I had come up along with our team, uh, the team uh, from the uh, Officer Monetary Economics team. We had come up with some different proposals and ideas as far as what actually is going to happen, and they are they all happen to be, they're coming undone right now. So Austrian monetary economics is taking back over. And this is the problem that we're seeing right now. It's causing the disruption in the housing market and the mortgage market and the bond market and the stock market. It's causing a, a problem as far as um, supply chain interruptions options, and also getting the layoffs and people are losing their jobs. It's all because what we've done is we brought five years worth of demand into today. And I'm talking about obviously but, a few years ago. And can I, can I stop you for just a second? Yeah. So as you're mentioning these things, um, what, how does it affect the average person when we start going from a Keynesian to an Austrian economic shift? So you're starting to describe some of that, but what does that look like in, in, in everyday life for someone that's out there that might be watching this? Well, what you should see and what we are seeing is you'll see Facebook go down for a little while and you'll see other platforms go down for a little while. And what's happening here, we believe, is that the new software is being put into these different platforms so that um, so it's getting rid of a lot of the bad things that uh, that are designed to spy on us. 
And I know we talked a little bit about type two uh, American silver eagles, and we have a video that you can watch. You need to download it from us. Send me a text at Ted, or not a text, an email, right? Ted at tedspeaks.net. Okay. And be sure to ask for the type two video. It wasn't us that broke the story. It was Bix Weir and Dick Algeyer. They're the ones that broke the story. All I'm doing is reporting the news. I don't make it. So at any rate. Just a disclaimer that to you guys real quick in the show too. I cannot give you financial advice, but what we're going to give you guys is a lot of information. Okay. With any information we give you, you can go on the web. You can go look it up. You can go do your own research on it. Um, you know, I'm hearing a lot of buzz. You, Ted, you've been dropping some truth bombs. People are, are definitely listening and they're, they're trying to figure it out. Um, along with any of this stuff, guys, you know, we're, we're giving you some information here. You've got to go verify it yourself. And with that, um, you've got to decide what action you're going to take from it. Well, keep so, in mind, though, I'm a retired certified financial planner yes. with 27 years of experience planning thousands of estates and thousands of financial plans. And not one of them kind of undone. So, yes, I would say that um, most of the people on the air cannot give out tax advice. I think I'm fully qualified to, although I'm not licensed and registered anymore. Of course, that changes everything, right? <laughs> Come on, give me a break. So, so le legally it does. So we just have to put that disclaimer out there for you guys, for the channel. Just we have to put it out there. But Ted can, Ted, Ted can definitely talk to you guys offline, too, um, and answer questions for you. We're going to be doing some of that in the member chat today as well. Um, but what you're looking at is someone that has a lot of experience, someone that's sharing a lot of information with you guys on how he would set these things up. OK, so as you go into doing it on your own, I'd recommend reaching out to him um, as well as other people you may be working with to just confirm everything that we're, we're looking at doing. But um, so, Ted, real quick, too, when when you're looking at these changes that are happening, um, you know, one of the things that that I've looked at is I just went out and ate last night um, at a sandwich shop. And I noticed that it was $2 more expensive than it was about three or four weeks ago. How is that possible? Uh, the, the dollar is dropping in value by the day. And the, the faster that the price rises increase, um, the, the, the closer we are to the end game. This is what happened in Venezuela. Actually, they wound up chasing the menu prices in restaurants two and three times a day. And back during the Weimar Republic, they were getting rid of the, uh, the, the German marks as fast as they were receiving them because they were losing value by the hour. OK, so this is what's called a crack up boom very, very slowly. And then all of a sudden at the end. OK, and where we are right now, we're already at the hockey stick. So what you have is you have a line that would be going like this. I can't wait to get that board back on it. I'm uh, I'm talking with some people. It looks like we'll be getting a vibe board in here pretty soon. But this graph, it, it, it shows it goes up like this. All right. So at the very end of the graph, it reaches what's called terminal velocity. Can't go any faster. This point is straight up. And folks, that's about where we are right now. So you talk about when it's going to happen. It really doesn't matter when it happens because you're either prepared or you're not. I mean, I got prepared, started learning about this 11 and a half years ago. A client of mine died and had all this silver. What in the world? I took it back to where he bought it. And guy made one comment. He said, uh, let me get this straight. You're going to give me this. It was hundreds of pounds of uh, pre-65 dimes and quarters and stuff. And uh, it, I'm going to give you a piece of paper with ink on it. And the way that he said that to me and the way that he looked at me and the way that he was dressed, he was telling me something. And for somebody to make a comment like that after 27 years of estate planning, I mean, big stuff. I mean, companies you would know the name of. I don't care where in the world you are. You would know the name of some of the companies that we did. Um, but we set up the family of many partnerships and did all that stuff. But you have to have a good plan. But what I would like to do is show you right now what's going on. I have set up all my currencies before. And this time I've made it. I've changed things for you. You're going to have to pay close attention. All right. So I'm going to show you 89 examples, okay? 89 examples of how the banks stole the silver from people, okay? Now, every time one of these notes was given out, the bank received something of real value, okay? And as we talked about before, we realized that most of the world's currencies are named after a root meaning, of, going back to Latin, of silver like the drachma, the shekel, they all have a root meaning back to silver. Now, these units that we're seeing here, these uh, currency units, they each have a unique identifier. So we lift this one up here. 
just pick one, you know, three quarters of the way down the pile there. Everyone has a unique identifier. Okay. Um, oh, what's the $20 bill doing here? Oh, somebody must have made a mistake. Oh my. What's the $20 bill doing in, in on the table of defunct currencies? It looks so much different than all the others, doesn't it? Jared, can you verify that all these that the $20 bill that's on the table right there, okay? Looks a heck of a lot. How's it? How's it? How's this looking? It does have a serial number on it. I can tell you that. Yeah. It has certainly looks official, doesn't it? It looks pretty official. Right. Okay. Now, what would have happened if, in fact, these people had taken these currency notes back and they'd gotten their silver instead? Would I have these notes? What happened to the silver and who has it? You follow what I'm saying? Okay. So, so 365 dimes. These are 90% silver. And some of these are actually pretty old. You, know, you see that one there. Okay. Yeah, you got a mercury right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So 14 dimes equals one pure ounce of silver, but also a dollar 40 of quarters, dimes, nickels, half dollars, dollars, whatever, will equal one one and a troy ounce of silver as well. Yep. Now, Jared said to me, hey, we're going to do this one, coins and change and everything. So how many eagles do you think are on this table? How many eagles do you think are on this table? Now, I got some other interesting things here. Here's a... Um, um, a, a, Ruth, a Ruthium uh, American Silver Eagle. This is a, uh, a Cougar Rand. That is about four nines pure. This is a Gold Buffalo. That is four nines pure as well. These are what are called uh, Canby Bars. There's 100 grams here, okay? And the idea is you can break them off and use them to fractionalize your purchases. These are uh, gold without borders. And there's a story about a young Vietnamese gal uh, whose grandmother had given her a gold chain and the family was trying to get out of Saigon. And what saved them was the gold chain around the little girl's neck because they got into a river and then the, uh, the what are they called, mules or whoever, to take them across the river <clears throat> needed to be paid. And the last thing they had of any value was the little girl's necklace. And that's what saved the family. So you were about ready to be example number 90 on my table, represented by the Federal Reserve note, joining the, the dustbin of fiat currencies, okay, that are now worth virtually nothing. Now, so, then I got a question for you. Yes. Um, this comes from Crypto Dream. He says, um, if the dollar collapses, would you guess that silver and gold and silver value would peak immediately after the dollar collapse or a bit after? I think that it's going to happen immediately. And the reason being is because people have to eat every day. Okay. They're going to immediately need a, a, uh, a medium of exchange, what we call the coin of the realm. Okay. It isn't going to take very long for all this to happen. It's going to be like the flip of a switch. The way I've explained it to my group of 17 that I've uh, been training and teaching for the last uh, eight, nine, 10 years is we have this very sick patient. OK, he needs all kinds of drugs to stay alive because his heart is just completely worn out. And his heart is this daggone Kensian heart. He's keeping it bumping, bumping, bumping. Heart, OK, <laughs> it's finally time to get the Kensian heart out of the animal. OK, so now what's happened? He's so sick. We got to keep this patient alive. We have got to pump so much daggone currency into him. We got to pump in one percent of the GDP, which is two hundred thirty two billion dollars a week to keep this guy alive. All right. So we know he's sick. We know he's going to die. So what we have is we have an operating theater all set up. We got the patient, the Keynesian guy on the gurney. He's being wheeled in and we got the heart rate monitor. We got this. We got the uh, the the, uh, the oxygenation of the blood through the uh, what is it called? Iron lung or something like that, uh, where they take in the oxygenate the blood. Everything is ready. OK, and it's been practiced for over 20 years. What has to happen? So what we need to do is we need to get that heart out of the hydra the Keynesian heart and put in the, <laughs> the, uh, the Austrian monetary economics heart fast like that. It's got to be lickety split fast because 7.8 billion people on the planet have all got to do away with the BIS money problem. They are the ones that are causing the currency problems around the world. All fiat currencies fail, but this failure is the failure of failures because we're seeing the failure 
of a global reserve, world reserve currency. And since all the other currencies around the world are issued by the BIS, I think we brought that up once before, didn't we, Jared? We did. We did talk about that. Yep. Okay. So they are the ones that are, are issuing all the fiat currencies. So they have the silver. They have your money that you gave them for their, for their paper. You're holding their paper. What I'm saying right now is it's time to take the paper and redeem it for the real money. And somebody said to me, so you're saying people should go all in on uh, silver eagles. No, I'm saying you should go all out on the U.S. dollar. It's the other way around. So the so gas prices is becoming let's more stop, expensive. Let's huh? stop there for just a second, too. So what, what are some of the alternatives to eagles that you recommend? You just showed some of it on the table. Well, first of all, you're going to want the most fungible, widely recognized um, American money that's out there. The dimes are great because it fractionalizes your purchase. Additionally, if you do the numbers on it, if a thousand face bag of dimes was $20,000, that would mean each dime is two bucks, right? And if there's 14 dimes per ounce, that would mean that each ounce would cost $28, right? So if the cheapest that you can get a type one Eagle monster box for right now is 16.5, which boils down to $33 per Eagle, and you can buy junk silver for, for 28, I would say you go with the junk silver especially if you can get the dimes. The dimes are the screaming deal right now. The Eagles, you should be picking up whatever the type ones are, but, but see if you can get the sealed boxes because the mixed years sometimes had type twos in them as well. So again, you'll learn the difference between type one and type two. Send me an email, ted at tedspeaks.net. I will send over to you the video of Dick Algeyer and Bix Weir talking about what Bix had discovered regarding the contract signed by Dick, uh, excuse me, by David Ryder, the then director of the U.S. Mint, with Honeywell over a 10-year period. Now, Honeywell has taken that technology and they scaled it to unbelievable uh, places. It, uh, they're able to track a pack of cigarettes anywhere on the face of the planet real time. Now, that sounds weird. But why is American taxpayers funding this research with Honeywell? I don't like that. Do you? I don't like no, that. Don't like that. So, so, guys, look, here's here's what I'm going to tell you. I, I've got type ones. I've got type twos. OK, so Ted's been sharing some information about this. I know there's a lot of buzz in the community about this right now. Um, what I can tell you is I don't have all the information. Ted has information he's sharing. So he's letting you know he's got a video that he can share with you guys that has some more information about it. So it's a, for me, it's a discovery period. It's going to be a discovery period for you guys. You've got to make a decision for yourself on what you want to do with that. Um, you know, the other thing I'll throw out there too, Ted, that we've talked about is things like this. If you've got bars laying around, don't feel like you have to go get rid of all this stuff, right? Yeah. Even if you have bigger bars, it's still silver. Now, the bigger the bar, the harder it can be to trade with someone if we get into crazy situations, just because it's harder to verify that it's pure silver through the whole thing. Even with the also, signal, bar that size, they're liable to fill out, be required to fill out a police report to see if it's stolen. That would mean that the that the per, the person buying the bar from you would have to put it in their vault for eight to fourteen days and pay you own the vault, own the bar, and then find out whether or not he's going to lose it because you stole it. Now, chances there you, are go. you didn't steal it, okay? But my question is, if if you show up with a thousand a uh, thousand uh, ounce bar, okay, and the cost is twenty three thousand dollars that you paid. And you're going to take it and negotiate with it. What percentage of the twenty-three thousand dollars do you think the store owner is going to give you for your bar? Is he going to give you hundred percent of what it's worth, or a percentage of that? Because he doesn't know whether or not the bar is, is real. He doesn't know if it's stolen. Yeah, I, right? I think you can have issues with that. So I would, you know, to me, um, you know, one ounce bars are going to be a lot easier to verify. You can do that on a Sigma machine pretty easily. Once you get bigger than one ounce, it starts to get a little tricky. But one thing I'm going to throw out there. To you guys right now, we're sitting at 170 um, thumbs up. If we can get to 500, I'm going to give this away before the stream's out. And we've got a fun way of um, of guessing uh, who's going to win that today. So go ahead and hit that like button, you guys. We'll get this information out. This is a cool bar to put out there to you. Um, but Ted, I had a question for you that came up too that I think is relevant to what we're talking about mm -hmm. as well, which is, um, you know, what's the minimum for people to get started with? Uh, you know, I think a lot of people are are concerned they don't have enough. Some people may think that they have plenty. Um, what advice would you give them? Do what you can. Do what you can. Um, there's no reason, as far as I'm concerned, to be holding receipts for the real dollar. I mean, for the real money. You're holding receipts when you're holding digital fiat currency. You're holding fiat currency.
So I was talking with somebody today. He said, well, I, I got about uh, 1.2 million in money in my, in my brokerage account. I said, look, if we're going to have a meaningful conversation, can we at least call it what it actually is? He said, what do you mean? And I said, well, I said, um, is it money? Well, he said, well, yeah. I said, no, it's not. I said, it's stock certificates, right? And the stock certificates are only, only redeemable into dollars, right? Can, can you redeem it into silver? Yes or no? Can you redeem it into any other current? Can you redeem it into a euro? Can you redeem it into a pound? Can you redeem it into a, a maple leaf or whatever? The answer is no, it's only redeemable into dollars. So if the dollar's crashing and what you're holding is only redeemable into dollars, come on, folks, we got to connect the dots here. Come on, man. The synapses aren't that far apart, okay? The dollar is dying. We're showing that on the U.S. debt clock that the, the, the amount of currency that's inside the account by which you can use to negotiate your $629 trillion worth of net worth against is decreasing. Can we pull up the U.S. debt clock again and show the people what we're talking about? Yeah, let's Because another that. thing I want to talk about on here is if your outgo exceeds your income, your upkeep becomes your downfall. My dad taught me that one more time. If your outgo exceeds your income, then your upkeep becomes your downfall. So what happens when you owe more money than your net worth? Well, there we go. There we go. All right. So look, this is what we're going to talk about here. So up in the upper left, you're going to see, come down just a tad so we can see that number in the upper left, the other way. There we go. So you got the U.S. national debt of $34 trillion. And that number, it looks like it's going up to me. What do you say, Jared? Uh, yeah, it's going up pretty fast, actually. Yeah. Now what we want to do is scroll down a little bit, okay? And we want to get on the same side. There we go. Stop right there. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to take the six hundred twenty-two thousand, excuse me, six hundred twenty-two trillion, two hundred eighty-four billion, and add that to the thirty-four trillion to come up with the six hundred and fifty-six trillion dollars of of claims against the M two money supply, which is how much right now? Twenty trillion, sitting at 20, 20. 20.7 trillion. Is that number going up, going down, or staying the same? It is going down quickly. <laughs> so the amount of money inside the checking account, the, the M2 money supply checking account that you can use to get your money out is going down. Okay. Now, how about the claims against the M2 money supply? The 622, eight, uh, 284. Is that going up or down or staying the same? Yeah, that's going up. Okay. And the debt, if we if take another look at that, that debt we already found out is going up as well, right? Yep. So we have the liabilities against the M2 money supply going up while we have the M2 money supply itself going down. Now, as we looked at those tables of dollars and currency notes over there, what makes the dollar any different than the other currencies that have gone fully defunct? Anybody got any ideas? Nothing. As a matter of fact, it was about 10 years ago. I'll never forget this panel discussion. Kyle Bass was on the discussion along with some uh, folks from the Federal Reserve. And Kyle Bass, he was the uh, trustee for um, uh, University of Texas, Austin, I believe. Yeah. And he was talking about how the count, uh, how the uh, University of Texas, um, uh, uh, what's it called? The, uh, their endowment fund had been investing in government bonds. So Kyle Bass said, well, what happens to the bonds at their maturity? He says, well, you just create more bonds and roll it over. And Kyle Bass says, well, send me the gold. That was 10 years ago. And what Kyle Bass did was he built the vault. And now he's holding the gold as, as real money for the proxies for the gold and the silver, which were the receipts, which is what the endowment was originally invested in. So if you're holding dollars or you're holding digital fiat currency, that's a, a, you know an apparition on a computer screen, I believe the time has come to turn that into real money. It's time to exit the casino. So what you're in right now is think of those 207 casinos on Sunset Strip, okay? And you're in the United States government. You're in the Federal Reserve Casino. That's where you've been all your life. So this guy, Ted, comes in the casino and says, hey, you know, guys, there's a fire in the back. I'm smelling some smoke. You better get the heck out. <laughs> the smart guy said, hey, Ted's got 27 years as a CFP. We ought to listen to him. So a lot of people start to make their way out, right? And when they make their way out, you got to take your chips to the cashier. And the cashier then is going to cash you out, right? So the cashier, let's suppose that she's not going to give you the currency. She's actually going to cash you out in silver. Let's just suppose she could do that. 
Now you walk out of the casino with the silver in your pockets. Yes, it'll weigh a few hundred pounds. But now you're standing outside on Sunset Strip. You're watching the fire engulf the casino that you just left, the Federal Reserve Casino, which is on fire. We all know that. You know that. I've told you that it's on fire. And now what happens? You wait for the fire to burn out. You wait for the firemen to come in and put out the fire. And then what will spring up is a new government. And a new government will have a new currency. And I've already seen the new currency notes. So, so yes, Ted, before, before we go there real quick, um, you know, some people are saying it's not going to collapse tomorrow. The dollar is going to be around for decades. When is it? When is it? Gonna, if, if somebody says it's gonna, not going to collapse tomorrow, what day is it? What day is it going to collapse? Are you well, I, I think where they're getting at is, um, do you see it going to zero and the dollar is gone? Do you see them calling the new currency a dollar as well? Do you see it transferring to something new or do you just see it becoming so worthless over time? It, it just becomes hard to even recognize what, what you can buy with it. I believe we're going to see a new dollar and it will still be called a dollar because of history. You know, again, originally the name of dollar was Thaler, T-H-A-L-E-R. But we here in America had a little trouble pronouncing Thaler on a consistent basis and we bastardized it down to dollar. But the meaning, the German meaning of Thaler is in fact silver. So where are we going to go with this? The dollar is going to end just like the table full of com uh, defunct currencies. It's going to end and a new currency will come in. But people are not going to trust the new currency. There's an old saying, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So what's going to happen is you're going to have a, sw you're going to have a snapback to real money. And people are going to know. They're going to know what a, a real dime looks like because they're going to be educated on this. It's going to be programs to teach people what the new money is. That's the actually the old money. So you got the money, which is the silver, the gold. The currency is actually currency when it can be transferred back or exchanged back into the, into the money, which is the silver or gold. It's one thing to say that it's backed. Anybody can say it's backed, but it has to be redeemable. And that's why the banks are going to need to be hydrated with lots of silver so the people, when they get their new notes, they can go into the bank and see that it actually is redeemable. Otherwise, where's the trust? They've been yep. lying to us for all these years. Okay. So will it happen automatically? It's going to happen very, very fast when it does happen. And that's, we've talked about the crack up boom, same kind of thing there. It can't be a long drawn out process because people have to eat and sleep and drink and, you know, take care of things every day. And there's 7.8 billion people on the planet. Now you think about the number of people on the planet needing two and a half transactions per day and then figure out what the available above ground silver is that can be used for, for monetary purposes. And if you put the numbers together like I did, the number of dollars that if they've created against the known amount of silver that can be used for money, they've created over $217,000 digital for every one ounce of silver that exists as money. Want me to repeat that? Yes. They have created over $217,000 for every one ounce of silver as defined in a constitution that can be used for money. Now, where does that wild number come from? Well, remember I told you they were adding, they were adding $232 billion per week, right? Well, it doesn't take too long of doing that. That's a whole lot of water in that soup. You know, Jared, if we put all that water in that soup at one time, we'd have a lot of mad people, wouldn't we? But we're smart. Do it slowly. We're, not, do it we're slowly. not going to put the water in all at one time. We're going to put it in gradually. What's going to happen, people aren't going to be as filled up from this crap this we're making. So now they're going to order a, a, bowl, a dollar bowl of soup, which costs to come down because of water in it. Okay. And then we're going to sell them half a sandwich. How many people have ever been to a restaurant where you buy a, half, a cup of soup and half a sandwich? Where'd that come from? Huh? Who watered that down? <laughs> come on, folks. Well, and here's the thing. It's just as expensive. It's like right. twice as expensive as it was a year and a half ago. It's gotten out of control. That water is going up in cost. You know, you got, got to yeah. pay for that water going in soup, you know? <laughs> well, it's, it's shrinkflation too. So the sandwich is getting smaller. The cup size of the soup is getting smaller. The price has doubled. I, I, I from, from my, as far as I can tell, we've had a, we've had a doubling, at least a hundred percent inflation in the food, at least going, when you go out to eat. Then why aren't crazy. I seeing any deflation in Ted? <laughs> There you go. So just another call out, guys. We're going to do a giveaway if we get up to 500 um, thumbs up before we leave the, the chat today. So go ahead and do that. And we'll do a fun giveaway today. Um, I've got a couple of questions for you. Yep. Comments. I'd like you to think of the dollars that you're holding in paper form or in digital form as simply yep. receipts. Hang on. Are simply receipts for the silver. Now, we don't know what kind of silver you're going to buy or how much it's going to be. 
but think of it as a coupon. Think of it as a receipt for the for the silver. It's time to get out of the casino. There's smoke. I'm smelling it. You're not able to yet. You're not trained to smell the smoke. That's why they send in sniffer dogs. Uh, you know, have fire department dogs to come in and find out where the fires are, the people or whatever. Okay. Um, I've been trained to smell out smoke, and I've been trained to, to smell out when the collapse is is in process, and it is in process, and it's actually very exciting. It's actually a lot of fun. If you're sitting on the sidelines, you're holding real money. You see everything else go to hell in the handbasket. You're going to have a blast sitting in your lazy chair with your feet up going, oh, my, hand me another Mai Tai there. <laughs> You're going to be very happy with the way things are going to work out. So, again, Article 1, Section 10 says that no state shall enter, enter, enter in any treaty, alliance, or confederation, grant letters of mark and reprisal, coin money, emit bills of credit, who's doing that, and make anything but gold and silver a, a coin in a tender and payment of debts. So if you didn't see any silver and gold, get uh, handed over the table when you took out a loan, is the loan constitutional? I would argue that it's not. No, and I don't if the think loan so. isn't constitutional, then, and and the ability to pay the loan back is being reduced because they're, they're withdrawing the M2 money supply. We just saw that in the chart, right? So are we going to inflate the debt away? We're going to renege on the day, debt? I'm going to tell you it's going to be neither. We're not going to inflate it. We're not going to renege on it. You know what we're going to do? We're going to repudiate it. The debt was never constitutional in the first place. And thank goodness we have leaders in our country right now that have the stones to stand up and take on the BIS. So they tell us what that looks like, Ted. What does that look like? What's it look like? Repudiating it. Repudiating it. Oh, you simply say these loans are unconstitutional and our population, our citizens of America are no longer required to pay these back. We're repudiating the debt because it was an illegal foreign entity that entered into our country back in 1913, ushered in on December 23rd, 1913. Two days later was Christmas day. In 1913, did we have jets that could jet these people that were gonna vote on this all around the country so they could get home on Christmas Eve? No, we did not. What does that mean? Did we have a quorum when that vote was taken? Oh, you better look into this too. Folks, we have been lied to on such a massive scale. I'm telling you, you don't own the dirt. You don't own the land that your house is sitting on. Take a look at the deed. There's only three ways to own the dirt that your house is on. A perfected the deed, an aloided title, and a land grant. They're the only three ways. Ask your land attorney. Okay? And then as so, far so as Ted, the, the facts are concerned, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, so, Ted, what, what has to happen in order for that to happen, for it to be repudiated? Is that an act of Congress that needs to do that? Is that something a president could do? What would that what would what would it take for something like that to happen? Well, I went on safari uh, with my younger daughter, uh, oldest daughter, a while back. And you know what a group of baboon are called? I have no idea. <laughs> so we're going to leave it up to Congress to do this. Heck, they can't, they can't even get the dungeons cleaned out underneath where they're doing the dog fighting and all that kind of stuff. No, it's going to take somebody in power that's probably already uh, uh, has absolved the power from, say, the Queen of England, from, uh, from the, the high macho guys over there in Saudi Arabia. I think there was a capitulation that went on that put somebody in charge. It's going to have to be that person's going to come by and say, all the ducks in a row, the BIS is gone. You can't create any money more right now. And that happened on March 11th. As of March 11th, the Federal Reserve Bank and all other member banks of the BIS are not allowed to create any more currency. So what you're seeing right now is the wind down. Okay. And now, since they can't create any more currency and the currency is being reduced and being withdrained, as you're seeing on the M2 money supply on the U.S. debt clock, what we're going to see then is tighter and tighter monetary conditions. Uh, one other thing I did want to show. Quick on that, um, sorry to interrupt you there, but um, how does someone research some of this information to to confirm it or to, to learn more about it? Same way I did. I mean, uh, uh, if you have questions, reach out to me. I'm getting all kinds of great emails. People have great questions. And some of them we, requires maybe a half hour, an hour conversation. I'm in this thing for the long haul. Folks, I'm with you. You you want to come with me? You're in. You're you're coming with me. We're on a journey of truth, and I've just told you a couple of big things. And there's a lot more things that are going to come your way too. You don't own the land where your house is sitting on. The word land does not appear in your deed. You don't own the stock certificates because you don't have something called a CUSIP number, a C U S I P number. Okay, and the CUSIP number is actually on the stock certificates that you used to receive in paper form. Okay. 
So yep. you see this unique identifier here, okay? Yep. Every stock, and see the guy's name, Kim and Company here, and yep. the name, number of shares of stock, okay? And see the QSIP number here? Where is it? Everything. Yeah, back. it's on the top QSIP number, okay? See that? Okay. Oh, there we go, down okay. to the bottom, yep. Now, what is a QSIP number? What I suggest you do if you're still hell-bent on holding stocks, give my office a call or send me an email on that or whatever you want to call it and ask for this copy so you understand what a QSIP number is. A QSIP number is very important. It's a unique identifier, much like having a, a VIN number on your car. Okay? So I would suggest you get the report, find out what it actually means, and why don't you have it now? And who does have the QSIP numbers? The QSIP numbers are held by the Depart Depository Trust Clearing Corporation at 55 Water Street. Now, what I understand, though, rumor is, is that all these stock certificates were kept in a, in a fireproof vault. But guess what happened? A fireproof, a fire broke out in the fireproof vault. Go figure that. And then what happened? Superstorm Sandy ripped up the East Coast and made an abrupt left-hand turn going westbound and landed right on top of Water Street. Golly days. You know what happened then? The vault got flooded out and all the water then came out with all the ash from all the stock certificates. I'm sorry. We don't know who owns it now, but we have a record. It's in our computer. And so, we'll be honest. We'll tell you who owns what. Yes. So can I call my stockbroker up and ask for actual stock certificates? Today? I would suggest that you do that because you've just met me, what, less than a month ago, right? And I'm telling you some pretty outrageous, crazy stuff. Call your stockbroker up and say, look, I just heard this. I don't know if it's true or whatever. You don't even have to set them up. Say, look, I'd, I'd really like to have 10 shares of that Disney stock in a paper form issued to my little girl, my daughter so that I can put it in the frame and put it up in a room. Okay. Cause the Disney stock certificates actually were very beautiful, but no one's holding Disney stock certificates anymore. Okay. They're, they're okay. done away there's with that. Here's a challenge. I would love to hear from you guys Send you know, call up your stockbroker, see if you can get, um, you know, a hold of an actual stock. Yeah. And do that. And, and then the show me what the new stock, your stock certificate looks like. That'd be Look awesome. at all the artwork. Look at the beauty that was put into this. OK, look, you don't have any of that. You don't have a unique identifier number here. OK, what do you own? Is it possible more than one person owns the same shares of stock that you do? I don't if it's know. possible, I'm telling you that it is. These people, if they're going to create two hundred and thirty two billion dollars of new currency per week, where are they going to say, oh, we can't do that. That's just a little too absurd. But 100 years goes by. Now you get. Charlie number two coming. Oh, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> Folks, we have been we've been raked over the coals and it's time that we get retribution. I'm looking for some uh, some swinging gallows very soon. So, Ted, I'm going to stop us for just a second. We've got 700 and we have 802 people in here watching with uh, 371 thumbs up. So we're going to do a silver giveaway when we get to 500, guys. Folks, if you do me a favor, not for Jared, I mean, I, I have no monetization to this channel or anything else. Would you please do us a favor and hit the like button? If you're getting any information out of this, you think someone else should know, please hit the like button right now. There's 800 of you watching. OK, if you hit the like button, it isn't going to cost you anything. What it is going to do is it's going to increase the algorithm so that more people will watch the uh, this particular program here. More people will learn that they don't own their stocks and more people will learn they don't own the dirt and the land where the house is. And remember, I told you that um, that George Bush had said that um, I had this. I want to show you all. It was a quote from George Bush. It said that if the people ever found out what we did, they'll chase us down in the streets and lynch us. <laughs> and, um, and that may have already been done. I don't know. But uh, what I do know is that currencies all have a life cycle. Digital fiat currencies and fiat currencies have a life cycle. Yep. I just showed you that over there on the table. Do we need to take another look at that? Um, we can in a minute, but I do have one question before we do that. Um, yeah. So, you know, we have people that are in the chat that have um, paid cash mm -hmm. for their house. They've paid their house off with American fiat. Okay. We have people that have bought lots and then okay. they built homes on them mm -hmm. and they may or may not have those paid off. Um, okay. You know, what's what? what's your advice there? Do they do they do, do they own a house? If, do they actually own the property, the house? I know you kind of covered this, but I think a few people are still trying to figure that out. Or where can they find more information on this? Well, first of all, this is a quote from uh, from George Bush. Okay, yeah, let me pull the, pe right. the people who ever find out we have, we have done, we'd be chased down in the streets and lynched. 
They've taken the dirt that your house sits on and realtors should know this. And people that have financial shows that are in reality should know this. And there was one company that's in Maryland that invited me to be on their show. They heard that I was talking about the fact that land is not a word included in the deed. And I was on my way over there to do, do a presentation with them. And guess what? Margaret Ann and I are in the truck, got it all loaded up, going to explain how banks were created. And we were told not to come. Not to come. They didn't want our information. They're trying to hide the fact from you that you do not own the stocks. The realty company is working with high, high powered stockbrokers. And unfortunately, no one is blowing the whistle, but their time is nigh. It's going to yeah, come what, up. What about cars? What about vehicles? What about RVs? Oh, my gosh. How, how far down this rabbit hole you want to get? First of all, <laughs> what, what does Regis mean? Does anyone know what Regis means? R-E-G-I-S. What does that mean? If something is regal, what does that mean? It's a king, right? Okay. Yeah, regal is. I don't know Regis, but regal, yeah. Well, do do some research yourself. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, folks. No, we won't go down, but guys, go. go look up that as well. So, Ted, let's take a look at um, the silver and the notes again real fast. You gave your car as a gift. I'm oh, sorry about that. When you registered it. Sorry about that. <laughs> but that's what actually happened. Folks, I'm telling you, look, look, look. Here you are again, okay? There's so, so okay, much so, done to us behind the scenes that we don't know about. We have not been told the truth because it's security. It's national security. We can't, we can't talk about that. So, so Ted, what, okay. You know, I, I've heard from a few other YouTubers on here too, on the, on, on YouTube that talk mm -hmm. about a lot of these same things. Um, you know, one of them will talk about, uh, you know, having gold and silver so that you can rebuy your house, you can rebuy your cars, you can short up things like that. There um, I'm talking. What, so no what reason. happens if we don't own these things necessarily? We have like either a reset or they come out with a new currency. And the people that are watching do have silver. They do have gold. Um, what happens? I mean, are, are we kicked out of our houses? Are we able to, you know, to keep well, them? Are we able to claim them? Let's first remember that there's 330 million of us. Okay. And in the United States, there's about 350 million guns. All we have to do is say, no, we're not putting up with this anymore and stand up. And that's the end of it. And it isn't going to take very many of us to stand up against the few of them that are trying to do this kind of stuff to us. OK, so as far as this is concerned, there is a portion of the law that says um, that possession is nine tenths of the law. If you're in your house and you're and, and you're occupying it, um, I don't think that the, I don't think that the new um, uh, the new administration is going to stand behind um, kicking people out of their houses. I don't see okay. that. Happening. We'll, we'll leave it there. That's so you guys do your research on that stuff, too. Um, I we'll, can't tell you everything I know. I really cannot do that. OK, <laughs> I, I would. I, what I'm doing is I'm telling you what you need to do. OK, and I'm giving you enough reason to do it and enough explanation and logic to do it yes. okay, without telling you the whole rest of the story. I'm not going to do that. So do, do you have a crystal ball? Have you seen all the future things that are going to happen? Not all of them, no. Uh -uh. No, nope. yeah, it's a little crystal ball. ball. <laughs> uh -uh. No, I, don't, guys, I, will, I will tell you this. Yeah. America is going to be one of the best places in the world to live. Because we've been kept down and technology has been held back from us. Our people haven't been working. Our factories have gutted. I'm telling you, America is going to be completely different. The kids that don't know how to get, a, get, out, of, get out of bed on time and show up to work on time, they're going to be taught how to be uh, good citizens and they're going to be taught to be punctual. They won't be living in your basement very much longer. OK, they're going to be required to get out just like they have to do in Israel. If you're going to be an Israeli citizen, you have to you have to be you have to put time in the U.S. Mil in their military. And you're going to learn to do sit ups and push ups. You're going to get in shape. You're going to learn stuff. You're going to learn real stuff that's going to give you real skills so you can participate in the real economy. If you're going to pay paid in real money, which is the way we're going, you're going to have to do something real. None of this junk that talking about the uh, buttons on a computer or keyboard or this this stock's going to do that. And this is going to they have no idea what's going to do. No yeah. idea. As a matter of fact, it's all a big game. It's all shell game. Watch the right hand while the left hand is picking your pocket. Folks, you turned in, you tuned into the right place. Take a look at the website, which is tedspeaks.net. We got all this stuff set up since March 1st. In 20 days, I think Nick Nick Collins from uh, Platinum Reputations deserves a round of applause. He set up the website, the email, the, the Facebook, the Instagram, the X stuff, all this kind of jazz going on. And um, I've learned a lot. So I'm glad that you guys are supporting us because... 
if you weren't there, I'd probably throw it in the towel and then nobody learns anything. I, I die with all the knowledge. So you guys okay. are supporting this. You want the information. I'm giving it to you. It's no charge. What I'd like you to do is please hit the like button for Jared right now. My, so yeah. we're now we're now sitting at five, we're, five, we're at five seventeen. So we'll do a silver giveaway as we get a little closer to the end here. Um, for you guys, so we'll definitely do that today. Um, we've got nine nine hundred in here watching right now, Ted. So a lot of people are listening. Um, so we we've talked about a few things right um, today already. Um, we've talked a little bit about silver too. We talked about constitutional silver. So I've got a, a little bag of it here, guys. So you've got quarters and dimes here. Ted's got a whole table full of it. Um, <laughs> This is real money. The paper stuff is not real money, but this used to be redeemable for money. Mm -hmm. It is no longer. These were silver certificates. Mm -hmm. And um, can we read that top line there, please? Bring yeah. that back and please do everything you can to hold it still. This certifies that there is on deposit in the Treasury of the United States of America one dollar, okay, silver certificate. They actually had silver in the bank. And so where, how come the bank doesn't have that note now? How come you have that bank? Do you have the silver that went with that note? Who's got the silver? <laughs> they stolen the silver from you, folks. They silver sold the land underneath your feet. They sold the stock certificates out from underneath of you. And now they're stealing. They stole the money from you. And that actually happened in 1965 when they took all the silver out of the coins. So, so how do we best prepare here, Ted? We've talked about... You know, we've talked about silver a lot. What happens if do what they don't want you to do? That's so, the way you prepare. Okay, so say say that again. And what do you do if you have gold? What do we do with the gold? Well, it's a personal decision. But um, as far as the mining ratios, we've been over this a couple of times. If it's coming out of the ground at seven to one, and sixty percent of the raw mining output is used for consumption for industry, that would leave the reciprocal of forty percent to be used for money. 40% of seven to one units coming out of the ground, seven in favor of silver, okay? Which mean that the, that the real pricing should be 2.8 to one. So 2.8, let's round that up to three and let's call silver, uh, excuse me, gold now at 2,100, although it hit a new high at 22 and change right now, okay? So if we got 2,100 divided by three, okay? This raw mounting, the mining output is seven to one, Going to take 60% off of that because it's it's a strategic metal. We need that to operate our economy. We need that for, for hospitals. We need that for communications. We need it for bombs. Got to have the bombs. <laughs> Sorry, you said the throw that in there. It's it, it does. It takes a lot of silver for that. Yeah. Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, geez. So, <laughs> well, so at any rate, the, the, the mispricing, like and what I suggest you to do is consider taking the gold in and getting 80 ounces of silver each ounce of gold. You got to negotiate a little bit. I got rid of my gold at 120 and I netted after the VIG uh, 107. So imagine being able to walk out of a coin dealer with 107 American silver eagles like you saw over there on the table for every one American gold eagle. I like those deals. I like those odds. I like it at 120 to one. But clearly, if we're 88, 89 to one, you should be able to walk away with at least 80, 81. So 81 ounces of silver. And then stay tuned to us, tedspeaks.net. And we're going to we're going to be watching the compression of the of the silver to gold ratio because it's going to be coming down. It is coming down from 120 to 88. We believe that there'll be a short period of time where it might hit one to one as it gets close. Those of you that are in our program here, I'll let you know. And that's when you let us know how many monster boxes you want to swap out of type one American silver eagles for type one American gold eagles. <laughs> so you're going to at that point, you're going to go after the gold eagles at that point. Oh, yeah. I love gold. I mean, I mean silver's going to get me all the gold I want, but uh, but silver, you got to polish and tarnishes. I mean, you know, but anyway, so, it, just to throw it out there, too. I, I, I love gold as well, guys. And um, for me, I still have gold. I have not gotten rid of all my gold. I'm I'm a lot heavier gold than I am silver. I met Ted a month ago, so I'm starting to think about this a little bit more. And if you watch some of my other videos on my channel, um even going back to before I met Ted, I, I talked about this year is a year that I'm going to be stacking more silver than gold, right. primarily because of the ratio. Mm -hmm. um, what I haven't considered doing yet personally is I have not taken um, specific gold and swapped it for silver, but I have been selling some of my gold that has gone up in value and it's allowing me to buy silver. So it's a little bit of, of, of kind mm -hmm. of a similar thing there. But um, to me, I like having both of them. I'm not going to get rid of all my gold to go into silver. That's that's not why I have my gold. 
Um, but I'm definitely going into more silver because what I'm seeing now is those ratios make a lot of sense. Um, you know, Math one doesn't one lie. Would be amazing to have. Um, mm -hmm. I have a hard time believing we're going to get to one to one. I hope you're right <laughs> because that would be awesome. Um, but even at one to seven would be incredible. Even one to 12 would be incredible. You would make a, you'd have a multiplying effect there in addition we're, to whatever. We're going to do better than one to seven. Okay. Cause that's, that would be awesome. that's, that's, that's mother's nature. <laughs> that, that doesn't even factor in the you, you know, irrational exuberance. Okay. I think one to one, but you know, this is what I do for what I did for a living. Okay. I'm not a hack at this. I actually went to college for this stuff. I graduated uh, with, with honors in, uh, and I got in, graduated with three bachelor's degrees and a minor in economics. I, I really do know what I'm talking about, folks, and I've been doing it a long time. So when I tell you things are are, are likely to happen and I ran an estate planning practice, never had anybody lose any money. I think you should be taking this a little bit more serious than what maybe some of you are not. If you're still out there listening to these stock pundits telling you, oh, buy this short, that, you know, the Jim Cramer guy hits the, you know, the, the stop button. This is not a game, folks. It's not a game. OK, there'll be plenty of time to play when the party's over. But right now, there's a whole lot going on, and you need to prepare for the end of this uh, this this uh, th this movie that we're in the middle of right now. But the decisions that you make right now, if you make the right ones, will ensure that your family for generations will be taken care of. And it doesn't matter how much money you have or how much silver it is that you have, and something's better than nothing. If you want to get in the game, uh, we got the silver chart, and I'll send that over to you. Uh, again, if you want the silver chart, reach out. It's ted at tedsbeaks.net, okay? And we'll send you out the silver chart. Um, and then there's a white paper that we put together regarding the BIS. It talks about tokenization versus um, digitization. And tokenization is all about the community that you live in owns everything that you have. So tokenization, that term is being bantered about very loosely but you need to read exactly what the BIS says tokenization is. It says you're democratizing your asset, okay? That means everyone's going to own Jared's house and his silver and his microphone and everything else. I don't like that idea so much. But anyway, if you're going to fall into the camp of tokenization, this has just been panted out there. There's another, another channel out there that, um, that one of the ladies that uh, came up with this um, uh, saying, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Well, the station that she left had somebody had somebody on there right now, and they were talking about the benefits and how tokenization is a good thing. They never even mentioned digitization. So yeah. the fact that you're not getting good information, it, 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 it's not good. You got to you got to find a place to get the truth. And well, I'm giving I'll, you I'll tell you, Ted. One of the um, being a technology guy, I sell artificial intelligence software. I've been in technology for a long time. I've also come from a banking background. Um, you know, at first when I started learning about cryptocurrencies and I started looking into tokenization, um, I was looking at it from a loyalty program standpoint to use for restaurants. I created a company in the past. And um, if I were to redo it, that's something I might look at from a rewards standpoint. It could be valuable to, to use it as a currency. However, here's the issue with tokenization is all of a sudden the privacy completely disappears. That's right. That's and right. if your privacy completely disappears, then everything is known you have no you have mm -hmm. no ability to basically protect or be anonymous to things yeah walk so, around with a pocket full of type twos you'll see yeah so then it all of a sudden becomes it you know it's not it's not just a matter of well what's your name or someone hiding their face when they're doing a youtube channel it gets to the point where the state basically knows everything you have in your house and when you get to that point that's a scary day um was that so, how our country was founded no, it's no. completely opposite of it. No. So I it's think there's going to be back to the Constitution. Enough of this game playing with these high right. school kids. Don't know how to count a checkbook. I think people are going to backlash on this when they start to wake up and really understand what tokenization is. It's not a good thing. It's it's bonded. No, no. and I'll, I'll fight against that all day long at this point. Um, but this so particular channel has a very clean reputation. There's a good-looking gal that's out there talking about the benefits of tokenization. I mean, yeah, I'm not up for that. We, like we've that. got we what we have to do, OK, is we have got to put together the working man's silver show and we have got to get together and we have got to flush out the crap from the good stuff. And All right. What I'd like to do is get some of these other great podcasters out there and let's plan this for the first or second week in June in Buckhead in, in Georgia. 
It's just north of Atlanta. Okay. They have a great restaurant. I mean, great the hotel there. It's called the Four Seasons. And uh, we're, we're putting this together. We're going to have top speakers. It's going to be a three-day event. It will be a, a, um, a welcome buffet dinner on Friday night, Saturday and Sunday, packed with speakers. You're going to leave with free stuff, you know, like Chachi stuff. There are going to be miners out there talking about what they do. We're going to be out there as well. We're going to be shaking hands, pressing the flesh. You guys get to meet us. We're going to be talking about what the next step is, because I think by the time that this rolls around, this um, this working man's silver show that we're going to have, it's not designed for the really wealthy people. It's designed for you, the hardworking people that have been lied to all your lives. Come and get the truth. OK, so, so we're working on putting all this together. Um, but if you're interested in this, please let us know. Uh, send a send a message out to on your board. What is it called? A chat. Yeah. Board or so, something? So, so guys, send an email to stacking surfer gmail.com. You can also email Ted. Um, Ted the working man silver show. It's for you. It's for yep. working. It's for middle class America. The guys that built their country. This is for you. We're going to tell you the truth. We're going to expose it all. And we're going to help you find the right deals and hold your hand the whole way. So go ahead and put a one in the chat if you have interest in attending the conference on on all of the information we're talking about. Hey, as we'll get well. Yankee Stacker out there. We'll have him stand up behind one of those wooden fences like uh, <laughs> that show. And you only see his, his glasses and a hat up here. And it, wouldn't that be funny? Get maybe an eight foot long piece of fence and he's walking yeah. up and down the fence. We got a dog on the other side. I want to hear what he has to say. <laughs> It'd be a blast. That would be a blast, but I, I'm curious to see, guys. Throw one in there. I'm curious to see how many of you would have interest in attending um, the working attending man's the Working Man's Silver, Silver Conference. Silver. Yep, and we can definitely put something like that together. And Ted, right now we're sitting at 575 thumbs up, thumbs up, and we've got of, um, how many people are watching? 900 people in here. We were just about up to a well, thousand. We get the other 300. Hey guys, do me a favor. Won't ask anything else here. Hit the like button. Those 400 of you that are out there and not, you know, lifting a finger to do this, we're putting a lot into this. So right now, what I'd like to talk about is we're all told and taught how to earn money. But have any of you also ever been taught what money actually is? Do you think money should be finite or do you think it should be infinite? Should money be uh, uh, divisible? Should it be durable? Should it be portable? Should it be fungible? Should money be scarce? Should it be verifiable, recognizable? What assets click all those boxes? And ideally, when we are finally made aware that the dollars we've been using are backed by nothing, they're actually dead instruments and not worth the paper they weren't they're, they're printed on. And a lot of the currency, actually 90% of it, is not worth the paper it's not printed on. It's all digital. No. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I think it is. Sorry. You guys got to get out of the game. Jim Sinclair came up with uh, with a saying a, long, a while back before he died. G-O-T-S, get out of the system. So people have been chiding me, said, Ted, you, you think everybody should go all in on silver? No, I think you should get all out of the dollar, okay? And you can get into whatever you want to get into, get out of the dollar, whether it's uh, real estate, if you want that, or if it's gold, or if it's silver. The screaming buy right now is silver. And of the screaming buys of screaming buys, the best buy right now is, a, is those uh, pre-65 dimes. 14 transactions versus one transaction out of American Silver Eagle. And you can get these things for under $20,000 for a thousand face bag, which would mean $2,000 for a hundred face bag, which means that a dime, a dime would be two bucks. So if the 14 dimes make an, uh, one Troy ounce, you're looking at $2 or $28 for an ounce of silver. If you went with the, with the, uh, with the pre 65 dimes. So, so Ted, just one thing to point out with that too, uh, right now, silver is almost about to breach $26. Okay. And if I remember correctly, a couple of weeks ago, we were sitting just above $22. So Look, it's, can we talk it's about that for a minute? Here. When you go to buy gas, doesn't the gas like three ninety nine nine? Okay, they they want to keep it underneath the four dollars or three dollars or two dollars or whatever. Okay, except for California. <laughs> <laughs> this just, time I was in California was great. I don't know what you guys. I'm gonna have bucks here. We're crazy. So, <laughs> but yes, they they try to keep it down a certain perception point, right? They try right, to keep yeah. it down below that four dollar. But mark once it breaks above mark. that. So if a house was $300,000, would it attract the same number of buyers of a house was $299,900? Okay. No. So what they're doing is, is they're trying to keep a lid on the price, but it's already broke through 25. It's already broke through 26. 
If it breaks through 27, then we're looking at 30, 50. Then we're looking at something called a circuit breaker. Isn't this nice? It's free markets. Mm -hmm. A circuit breaker means that the price of silver is going up so fast. They thought about this in advance, folks. What does that tell you? Do you think about things in advance that aren't going to happen if you're in control of everything? I don't no, know. So. Probably. Okay. So anyway, as the silver continue, goes up, unless they have different... One of the circuit breakers I know is at 35. So once okay. silver hits $35, the market shut down, give it a chance to breathe and see... Is there any way we can push it back down? But you know what, folks? We are standing up against the bad guys. So what happened with J.P. Morgan is they got convicted of rigging the silver market. And it took yeah. years to convict them. And they were fined over $900 million. Whose money was that, you think? Theirs or yours? I think it was ours. So after being fined the 900 and some odd million dollar fine, they were issued something that I never got, you never got, I don't know anybody ever got called a deferred prosecutorial agreement. Wow. How about that? This means that, Jared, we found you guilty. You paid the $900 million fine, but we're not going to slap your hands. We're not going to throw you in jail unless you do it again. And you have to do it again outside of three years, not inside. If you do it inside of three years, we're going to come back and get you on the crime you just got, got nailed on. But more importantly, we're going to nail you with RICO violations. Folks, you need to learn about RICO, R-I-C-O, okay? You're going to hear a lot more about this. The RICO <laughs> violations are all about treble damages. So if you're found guilty of colluding and ripping off a large number of people, you can become a class action uh, person in this. And if you are prevail in your suit, as many have with these RICO violations, the damages are three times whatever it was that you were jilted out of. So yeah. this is a way for people to try to get back what it is that, that have been taken with them. Well, Ted, so, let's do this real quick. We're going to do a quick giveaway um, of this silver bar. How many, how many likes do we up to? Is anybody listening to? We're at to 643 likes. Okay. So we're going to do a quick give giveaway of this Buffalo bar here. Mm -hmm. And what I what I thought would be fun is if you could show the, um, no one make a guess yet. Okay. I'm going to put, here's the rules. You get one guess and um, you've got to guess the amount Um exactly or come the closest to it if you're over it you're disqualified for that but what i'd love to do is um you guys have to wait until i hit s go actually i'll say start in the chat and it's got to be after this but what i would love to do ted is have you show us that silver again okay all the eagles and make a guess of how many silver eagles are in there is that a monster box fool who thinks it's a monster box fool who thinks it's less than a monster box? All right, guys, start. Who thinks it's more than a monster box? Okay. No, and only one guess, too, guys. Now, look. Look how high they're, top, they're, they're stacked here, okay? Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Can they see how high it's stacked? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And then don't forget about these little these little beauties over here. They're encap encapsulated here, okay? Now, we're not going to count this one over here. Yeah, you can't count that one. Not going to count that one. And we're not going to count the uh, the gold cougar and we're not going to count the gold buffalo. We're not going to count the Val Camby bars or yep. the 22 karat gold uh, jewelry. Okay. So, what kind of numbers are we getting here? Is anybody even getting close? Uh, we're getting some numbers. So, I just want to, I want to um, throw a couple things out there. I want to thank JT Coins real quick for, uh, for his super chat of $2. Thank you, JT. And also Crypto Dreams for his of $2. And then uh, we have a new member. Just so you guys know, there are memberships on the channel. Um, it starts at $2.99. We're going to be doing a buying club um, at a discount, as well as we have um, monthly Zoom chats where uh, people like Ted are coming in today after the show um, to answer some you know, personal que questions. And it's a private closed group. So we can also get into a few more of the questions that we may not be able to put out here on uh, YouTube. So I think we're getting close here, but I forget the exact number you had. Are we had. up to seven or eight hundred yet? How are we doing with the likes? The likes, we're at about six seventy nine. Okay, we get this up to eight hundred. I'll show you something really interesting. Okay, you guys got to get up to eight hundred, and Ted's got it. Got something cool to show us. All right, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna wind this down here. Hurry and get your first guess in, everybody. Okay. All right, All right folks. The so did they hit 800 yet? How many people are watching? 
We've got uh, 906 people watching, 679 likes. Okay, let's get that up to 800, and I got something I'm going to share with you that you'll probably never see anywhere else. That'll be awesome. So, and then Tiger, we want to thank him for his uh, super chat here at. Uh, let's see. He says, "If you're going to hide the Yankee behind the fence, does Tiger get hidden behind the tall grass?" Uh, yeah, we may have to do something like that. <laughs> we'll see, Tiger. Well, why don't we see if Yankee will join us? For this so, uh, working man silver show, and this is going to be for the people. It's not going to be expensive. It's going to be something everybody can afford. It's going to be great food, lots of fun. You're going to meet like uh, like minded people. Think of it like a big Trump rally or something. Okay, totally. You have fun. How are we doing on the like so far? Are we up close? We're at seven oh seven, so we're getting closer. So Ted, can you give us the number of eagles that are in that pile? Three. Uh, no, excuse me. 858 eagles are in that pile. Okay, 858. 858. So there's a monster box. Right monster now. box has 500 in it. So it's more than a monster box. Okay. But you got to admit, <laughs> that is beautiful stuff, isn't it? Especially when it's not. All right. Tarnished. So there's the, there's the number, guys. 858. 858. 858. Okay. Okay. So what I'm I'd like to show you now is, is how what they did closest. behind your back that you know nothing about. Okay. So this is the $5 bill that we're all used to now, right? Okay. All right. Now, if you pull a bill out of your pocket, it's going to look very similar. It might have a one or a 10 or a 50 on it or whatever. But what I'd like you to focus in on the very top line there. Okay. What does the top line say there, Jared? Federal Reserve note. Got it. Okay. Now, back in 1963, this note was created. Okay. And what does uh, that United mean? United States note. Are they one and the same? Is the United States note the same as the Federal Reserve note? Uh, no, that's different. No, that's right. If it's spelled differently, it's different. Now, look at this. Look at this. Okay, watch. They made it exactly the same size, too. Isn't that something? They're fooling you, people, okay? And you don't even know it. And I'm showing it to you. You don't own the stocks you think you own. If you do, ask for a stock certificate with a QCIT number on it. You don't own the dirt that your house is on. If you did, your deed would say land in it, which it doesn't, okay? And you don't own the money that you're, it's in your pocket because it's actually owned by the Federal Reserve Bank, which is a private corporation owned by the Bank for International Settlements. So this is three things, and we're going to be talking about estate planning uh later on but i want you guys to be flush with assets so we have some real good reason to do some estate planning in the first place but if you're going to be left holding those uh those dirty dollars you're not going to have real purchasing power coming out of the under end of this thing uh we're seeing that the dollar is being inflated away did you know that every 100 days your government is printing up and creating a hundred Oh, excuse me, it was printing up and creating a trillion dollars every 100 days. Every 300 days, $3 trillion are created. And you know what the interest is that you and I and everyone else that's watching this in America has to pay? $1 trillion in interest. I would like, how are these how are these politicians amassing such wealth when they, they can't even balance the United States checking account? We already see that there's $20 trillion left in there to negotiate $658 trillion dollars worth of uh, claims against the 20 trillion so what i suggest you do is get your 20 get your piece of the 20 trillion out of there or figure out what your percentage is of the remaining dollars when it does hit and multi and that is going to find out you're going to find out that if you take the total amount of claims against the m2 money supply of 20 trillion you're going to find out they can cover you for about 3.1 percent of what it is you're showing so if you have a million dollar portfolio you're going to wind up with what, thirty-one thousand? That doesn't sound very good. No, no. You got you got to be ahead of the pack. You got the information, but information without not without action. Knowledge without action is worthless. You got to put what you know into action. Now, if it's not comfortable enough in your mind, you haven't quite figured it all out or it doesn't sit right. You need to do more research. But once you learn and you're comfortable, as it took me a little while to be comfortable embracing silver to the degree that I am now. I mean, here I had to unlearn 27 years of financial planning practice. Imagine that all from a guy saying, let me get this straight. You're going to give me this. and I'm going to give it a piece of paper with ink on it. That's all he said. <laughs> Bob Mangles down there, Golden Eagle Coin. I'll never forget him. May his soul rest in peace. He's, he's, uh, he's since passed. 
So at so any rate, quick, um, CL, this is yours. I just need you to send me an email, stacking surfer at gmail.com. Send me your contact information. Um, so I can mail it out to you. I just need your name and your, your address. Um, and I'll send this out to you in a flip, but that is a beautiful piece of silver and it's three nines fine. And I've never seen a Buffalo bar before. So I picked these up, um, up in New Hampshire at Tim's place. It was great for those of you guys that watch Yankee, but anyway, uh, you got the closest at 850 and Ted, we're at 735. So I think we're going to fall just short of it. Um, and we've got to start winding down the stream to make it for the, uh, member, let me ask you a question because I don't know that much about YouTube. If somebody were to hit the like button, does it identify who they are? Does it put a mark against her? Does anyone know who it is that hit the like button? Uh, not as far as I know, no. Okay. So if they hit the like button, it's no skin off their off their skin, right? No skin off their teeth, right? No, I mean it'll it'll the other thing that hitting a like does is it um it'll it'll take each video that you hit a like on and it'll basically put it into a new um private um uh, so if you like this kind of information you hit the like button then it'll it'll put more uh podcasts that fall into that same category is that the deal uh, it'll put it into a playlist for you guys personally so that if you want to go back and watch this it, it helps save it for you guys folks we're going to be back again um and we have a lot more to cover and uh if you'd write some notes let us know how we're doing or is there any changes you'd like to see in the form format at one point i was being chastised because i spoke too quickly but you got to remember i take i listen to podcasts at about 1.5 x speed so i'm taking this information in real fast plus i'm reading and gathering other information we're, in we're, we're trying to slow ted down a little bit but the other thing i'll throw out there if you guys have any questions you know we've had a lot of questions around the type one type two eagles please reach out to ted on that um, I don't have all that information. I'm still learning about it myself, and I'll be researching some of that with Ted to understand. But again, it. Nick Weir is the guy that that broke the story on this. He should get all the credit. And yep. all you're getting from me when you call in and ask for information about what's up with the Type 2s, I'm going to provide you with a video link so you can actually hear from Bix when he first discovered this, what happened. And I believe he's actually showing a copy of the contract that the, uh, the Mint director, David Ryder, had signed with Honeywell. So your tax dollars over a 10 year period of time were used to find ways to keep track of who you are, where you are, what you have and where it's going. I don't like that. Things, so, things have got to change. So Ted, are. last thing I'm going to throw out there real quick for us is um, I, I believe you've been on Ron's basement as well. So that's another channel I'd recommend you guys take a look at. And if any of the mods could put his link in there to his channel too. Um, Ted's got a lot of videos over there. I do have a new playlist that says Ted speaks on it. So you guys can go and watch some of the older videos that we've done in oh, the last few you, weeks. So go take a look at that as well. Um, hit a subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. That way you're more notified of when these are coming out. I've got a lot of other great videos. Um, I'm dropping a video real soon on constitutional silver so you can learn more about it, what it is and how to get it. Um, I've also got another video that'll be coming out with, um, uh, Let's see. The other one I have is my prediction of where I think some of the silver and gold prices are going to go and, you know, what I'm doing this year. Um, and I've got a handful of other videos that will be coming out in addition to these live streams that I think you guys will enjoy. Um, so I try to mix it up, make it fun. I like to walk around the beach talking about silver and gold. And um, there'll be other interviews that are out there as well for you guys. So hit that um, subscribe the, and the bell icon so you're notified. And then also take a look at, um, at Ted's channel and subscribe as well. So really, we're just trying to get the truth out there as we understand it. We may not be perfect. We can't guess everything. We don't know everything. We haven't been to the future. Um, <coughs> you can see trends and patterns starting to happen. Um, as you're watching different YouTube channels, you're going to start to see some convergence of ideas as well. Um, <coughs> that can kind of give you an idea of where some of the things are heading. Um, but as always, do your own research. And before you make any decisions on this, it's important to be informed. And that's part of what we're trying to help you guys do is be informed. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, the sign will come down off the uh, off the uh, plaques back here, the, the, Sh the Shriner and the Blue Lodge. I'll take those down. If you have been able to see the little note that I put up here. Okay. Yeah, show us. <laughs> okay. So we're not all bad people. Here, let me, right? let me make yeah. it a little bigger so you guys can read that there. Yeah, hang on. There we go. Okay. All right. There you so, go, Ted. Please don't, please don't say nasty things, okay? I'm not saying nasty things. You don't say nasty things, all right? Let's be <laughs> adults here. Okay. Be nice, I guess. 
All right, everybody. So I want to thank you for coming on and, and helping us. And uh, we'll talk with you soon. So thank you, everybody. All right. Peace out.